Let's go! So this project begins with a quarter inch piece of plywood and a three quarter inch piece of plywood broken down into their respective size on the table saw and miter saw. A full cut list can be found at diybuilds.ca if you're interested in making something similar yourself. After everything is cut to size, I can bring over the top to the CNC and mount it in the exact location to start cutting out the inlaid pieces and the recessed pockets. Now, I only went ahead and cut out the outline of all these pockets as I simply set the depth on my handheld router, put a much larger bit in it, and used that to manually clear out the bulk of the material, as I figured this would be faster and less wear and tear would be put on the CNC machine. Next I can mount the front of the table on the CNC machine to cut out the drawer fronts. This way I have grain continuity all the way across the front when the drawers are installed. As you can see, somebody here decided to turn off my lights as I was recording this, and they will remain nameless for obvious reasons. The next thing to do was cut out the inlaid pieces from the quarter inch piece of plywood, as well as the pocket recesses on top of the D-pad. One of the buttons for start and select did loosen up and the tab broke off and it pretty much went flying through my dust collector, so I did have to recut that later. After that was done being cut out, I could use a chisel and a hammer to break all the tabs and break the pieces off individually, then give everything a light sanding on the front, back, and sides to ensure proper fit later. The next step was to give the tabletop a dry fit to make sure that all the pieces fit correctly and then mark down which orientation everything fit best. With the top now complete, I can bring it over to the table saw and put a 45 degree bevel on both edges and then bring it over to the chop saw and put bevels on both the ends. That's the way this is assembled. It's going to be made with 45 degree bevels on all four sides, including the fronts and backs and side pieces as to create a totally seamless product without use of edge band or butt joints. So I began assembly by gluing up a thick piece in the middle, which is going to act as the drawer divider and act as kind of a rib for the middle of the table to give it some rigidity, then drilling pocket holes in it for mounting later. Next up is the two side pieces, which also receive a thickener plate, which will also get pocket holes and really made the assembly of this much easier, as well as adding some thickness for the drawer slides to not hit against the face frame. As you can see, I had to clamp this piece down on either end as the glue dried, as this piece of wood was quite bowed. Next, I took some scrap 3 quarter inch plywood, drilled pocket holes in them, and these are going to be used as cleats to kind of guide the front, backs, and sides in their proper location. I attached them with glue and brad nails, but first aligning them with a scrap bevel piece to ensure that they're in the right location. The reason you see my vise and wrench set on either side of the top piece is to add weight to the ends to keep them down as this top piece was quite bowed and weighing it down on both ends made this assembly process much easier. To install the sides, I first drive in one pocket hole, line up the other side, drive in the second pocket hole, and then add my third cleat with a little bit of space in between, as again, that piece was bowed and these pocket holes will suck it in before the middle pocket screw is driven down into the tabletop. Then glue is added and everything is screwed down to its final location. When installing the front where the drawers are, you can see on top I have a spacer pushing out the sides as these kind of sucked in as my 45s were not exactly 45. Glue was then added and everything was screwed into place. The exact same process is required to attach the back. Next I can mark out where the center rib is going to be mounted as this will tell me where to apply glue and help the alignment process when I screw everything in place. I check with a square to make sure that everything is in the right spot. Next I added iron on real wood edge banding, in this case it's red oak to the sides and bottom of the drawers in each drawer front. The top wasn't necessary to do as it will never be seen. Once dry, the edge banding can easily be trimmed up flush with a sharp chisel. Next, using some stainable red oak wood filler, I filled all the cracks that were visible and then sanded everything flush after it dried for a few hours. Mm -hmm. 
The next step was to add the edge banding to the drawer fronts. This receives edge banding on all four sides, although the bottom really is optional. I first started by adding edge banding to the ends, bringing it over to the router table and flush trimming all that, giving it a light sanding and then ironing on the top and bottom edge bands. Doing the same thing, bringing them back over to the router table and flushing them up, then giving them a light sanding on the edges. Next I set my table saw to 10 degree bevel and ran over some scrap pieces of red oak to create handles for the drawer fronts. To install the drawer handles, I lined up the handle on the front and marked out exactly where it was going to be placed. I then traced around the handle, giving me a location for where I could apply some tape, then put some hot glue on the tape and attached the drawer handle exactly where it needed to go. Now with the drawer handles temporarily attached to the drawer front, I can flip over the drawer front and mark out the location for the two holes which will hold on the drawer handles. After these holes are drilled, I can peel off the drawer handles and be sure to mark exactly where these drawer handles go. In case there's any sort of discrepancy, everything will remain square and parallel. The tape can then be removed along with scraping off the excess hot glue on the back of the handles. Next, the inside of the drawer is lightly sanded, so I can then use a center punch to kind of scribe in some details about which drawer is which. Now onto the backs and sides of the drawers. I can apply edge banding to only the tops. This is then brought over to the router table and trimmed up flush and then lightly sanded on the edges. Back at the router table, I can set up for creating a rabbit on the bottom of the drawers to accept the drawer bottom. The sides and back all receive through rabbits but the front receives a start and stop that does not go all the way to the end. Next over at my homemade pocket hole machine, I drill the pocket screws, four in the back and two in each side piece near the front. Next up is assembling the drawers. You can see I use the two back pieces as a front and back spacer for the side pieces as I attach the front with glue and screws. These act as templates to make sure that everything is equally spaced. After both drawers are to the point where they have the fronts attached to the two sides, I can then attach the backs to each drawer using glue and four pocket screws. The large piece of wood at the back ensures the back piece is flush with the sides as I clamp it down and drive in the four screws. With the drawers complete minus the bottom, I now have the correct sizing of the drawers and cut it out out of quarter inch plywood on the table saw. I then give it a sanding before installed as this will be insanely hard to sand after the fact. It is then attached with glue and several crown staples around the outside. Now I opted to use 20 inch drawer slides, but you can certainly use 18 inch drawer slides here. Because of this, I had to carve recesses at the bottom about a quarter inch into the three quarter inch plywood to make room for the fronts to sit flush. Now to deal with the thickness of the edge banding iron on to the side of the openings along with the thickness of the 3 quarter inch plywood not being actually 3 quarter inch, I had to cut up some shims to make up the difference for the drawer slides to fit properly out the front. The outside piece was a thicker piece of oak glued in place. The inside shim wasn't that much so I simply used a couple strips of iron on edge banding to make up the difference. Once the glue was dry, I can remove the temporary straps which are clamping the piece down and then start working on installing the drawer slides. I use some spacers to make sure that all four are the exact same height off the top. Once all four drawer slides are installed, I can flip over the top, install a spacer the exact thickness of the front edge and then place a quarter inch piece of plywood on the bottom that acts as the offset for this drawer to sit on top of to create the right gap around the entire drawer. I can then pull out the drawer slightly with the drawer pulls, attach the first two screws, and keep doing this as I work my way towards the back. The fourth screw, I need to remove the drawer entirely, put it on the ground, and install the two screws. 
Next, I can reinstall the drawers and verify the fit and function of both drawers. After that, I install both drawer handles and then it's on to work on the legs. Over at the chop saw, I break down some 2x4 pieces of oak, which are going to act as the legs. They all receive miters on the corners, except for the top, which are going to be directly drilled into the 3 quarter inch bottom piece. The way I chose to attach these mitered corners was to simply clamp everything in place, drill some holes through the bottom of the legs, and then attach it with glue and 3 inch screws. With the legs and top now complete, I can measure and cut to final size the bottom piece which is going to attach the legs to the top. I then use an off cut of the leg to mark out the perimeter of the leg to show me where I can drill three pilot holes, countersink, and then drill and screw in three screws to each leg. With the legs attached to the bottom, I can sand everything and knock off the sharp edges. I could then grab the entire assembly and flip over the top piece and attach the leg and bottom piece with screws in the middle and the sides, marking out the center column so I know not to drill into the drawers. And with the legs attached, assembly is now complete. Now please enjoy a time lapse of me disassembling everything and getting ready for stain. So the gray stain I'm using here ended up drying really dark and I didn't like the way it looked at all. So I ended up sanding everything down and going back over it all with some watered down gray paint. As for the black parts, I used a Minwax ebony colored stain, and the red buttons, I used a red tinted stain. To create the red lettering for the Nintendo logo, BA buttons, start and select buttons, I decided to use my laser on a full sheet of label paper, cut out the letters, and use the negative of those images to place onto the wood, and then spray paint on top of. This actually worked out fantastically, and it wasn't totally opaque, so you could actually see a bit of the wood grain underneath these paint jobs. After the laser finished cutting out all the labels, I used a utility knife to peel up the labels, making sure not to lose the inside of the A, R, and other letters that have an inside piece floating around. After all the labels were lined up and placed correctly, I could press them all down firmly and begin masking off the rest of the areas. Then it was on to spray painting four coats over the course of 45 minutes. After waiting about four hours to dry, I could then peel everything up and all the little pieces inside the letters I used my utility knife to simply peel up and remove. None of the paint bled through any of the tape or the labels, which honestly surprised me on how well this worked. Now that all the staining was complete and dry, and all the logos were added on, I could start by adding a whole whack of glue to the top piece, and then one by one start adding in all the inlaid pieces. Everything was tapped into place and then weighed down with a whole whack of crap around the shop. While the glue was drying, I attached the two drawer handles, getting ready for polyurethane. Then I could remove everything from the top and look at the marvelous creation I had made. The finish I put on this project was three coats of water-based polyurethane semi-gloss with sanding lightly in between each coat, except for the final coat. After letting the polyurethane cure for about three days, I could then begin final assembly. The drawers are first put in place, then the legs placed on top and screwed down with the existing holes. 
And with that last screw put in place, the table can be flipped over and is now complete. Thank you so much for playing my game.